well, Perinese just wrapped up, and I uh, don't even really know where to start. But we'll give it a shot and break it down. Welcome back to the Tour Breakaway. Uh, great, wild week of racing in Perinese. This is the race that last year was the race to the sun and the, and the race to COVID, really, getting, getting shortened before they made it to Nice. Max Schachman was the champion. This year coming back uh, to defend that title against a much more challenging field, including Primoz Roglic. And look, coming into this race, didn't think it was the most exciting field because further east in Europe where you got Terreno Adriatico going, we have an absolutely uh, monster field and insane racing going on. And it's almost difficult each day to follow each of the races and, and keep track of what's going on. Uh, everything looked to be under control in Paris, And then if you, if you, if you missed it, this, this final stage is absolutely worth the look. Uh, I'll break down the whole thing, break down the whole race. We'll start there and then we'll talk about what we learned as well as what we thought we could expect coming in. And, you know, first things first, you know, we had a couple sprint stages, stage one, sprint stage for everybody, really uh, nervous, a lot of nervousness in this race early on in particular. Sprint was won, though, by Sam Bennett, and he won over Arno DeMar and Mads Peterson. Sadly, uh, lost Richie Port on that stage, uh, after after his crash so uh tough start for for him now stage two more crashes a bunch of riders got caught up but um case bull took the stage for dsm again over mads peterson and michael matthews having a go stage three time trial short one yeah, 14 kilometers stefan biesiger ef education uh he had a really strong time trial at the uae tour he was second uh but here today he said right or on that day he said right no ghana here I'll take this one into my own hands. He won over Cavania by a fraction of a second and Roglic by six seconds. A um, couple other notables, you know, you had Paulus, kind of 32nd, a little fur back, Gaudu, 52, Martin, Gamartan, rather, a minute 16 back. So, you know, starting to see areas where some riders may uh, be cracking. Stage four, continuing on, Roglic just says, okay, okay, boys, my turn. Power's over to win the stage. Uh, one over Shackman, who kept it pretty close, 12 seconds back, and Gam Martin and Vlasov also 12 seconds back. Uh, decent days for McNulty. He was 21 seconds back, but it moved him onto the uh, onto the podium position in third. And Matteo Jorgensen, the 20 year old 21 year old American riding for Movistar, uh, was 24 seconds back and moved into the top 10 on GC. Not a great day for Jai Hindley. This is one of our narratives. What's going to become of these guys who rode so well in the Giro last year? Are they really legit GC contenders? Or was the Giro just a one-off 2020 flash-in-the-pan Giro because of the competition that was or was not there? So not great sign for Jai Hindley, 53rd. Uh, and P uh, Nielsen Palace, who looked great at the UAE Tour on the attack again, but did himself in, fell a minute 41 back on the stage. Um, same with Lutschenko, ended up finishing 547 back, just did himself in. So stage five, back to the sprinters, and you know how that goes. Sam Bennett with Michael Morkow uh, taking on another win. Their fourth as a partnership this year. Um, already got, um, you know, on pace to, to explode uh, his total of seven from last year. Uh, and that one was over Buhani and Ackerman, who barely sneaks onto the podium for the third time in his racing season. He's done no better to date. Stage six, Roglic again. Test my wheels, boys. You know, it was a relative bunch uh, bunch finish, but he took it over Laporte and Michael Matthews. Simply, nobody else has a gear like, like Roglic has in these cases. In stage seven, this is really the queen stage, the climb to Colmaine. Uh, escapees were out hunting to steal the stage. Roglic again said, no soup for you, no gifts, no winning allowed for anyone but me. He catches Gen Gino Mater 20 meters from the finish line, taking the win. Mater right there behind him. Shockman third, five seconds off. Shockman doing a really good job keeping it tight, keeping it close, and staying there in second. Big gaps for a lot of riders. Jorgensen and Paulus, um, you know, didn't have big days. Uh, a minute back. Gaudu almost two minutes back. Lutschenko, another failed attack and rolled in almost 10 minutes after Roglic. Really mixed form for him. Um, definitely not an overall better performance than we saw 
um, in the UAE tour. You know, he just really seems to be off from uh, what went on, you know, in his in his COVID recovery. And then today on the final stage, he just rode himself straight into a rock. And I and I believe he ended up dropping from the race. Uh, not sure if he went on to finish. He was being checked out by the medical staff. And then today, just absolute mayhem and hate to see it. Roglic crashes twice on both sides, completely torn up. Um, absolutely... Uh, skinned shorts ripped bare skin and raspberries all over both his hips glutes um, and and uh, upper thighs and two crashes both sides and apparently he was riding on somebody else's bike just absolute devastation for him Uh, gets caught out in the back and has to pull the entire last 20k effectively the last 20k solo trying to get back to the bunch who upon knowing that there was blood in the water and skin on the streets, went into full attack mode for Shackman as well as Vlasov. um, uh, And and Astana really had two guys in the mix, so they just went for it, and you can't blame them for that. That's absolutely what you do in that case. Um, Nothing to be done about it. And, you know, gutsy riding by Roglic. I mean, he he just said, I'm going to empty the tank. I'm going to give everything I could possibly do to pair these losses. He had 52 seconds to give. Unfortunately, it ended up being more than that. Um, It was just impossible to reel back when there was such a strong, large group able to share the pulling up front. um, And he just was unable to reel that in. And so over time, he just slowly lost that margin. Uh, Within 10K to go, Shockman moved into the virtual lead, and then it only increased from there. Roglic, unfortunately, um, not finishing um, on the podium. So what was going on up front? Well, everyone was was attacking. They were having a go at it. And uh, down the final descent and into yeah, kind of a group sprint with a select group, Magnus Court takes the win over uh, over Laporte, who's, who's had a great go at this. So um, regardless, you had Shackman in the bunch. So what that meant was that Shackman takes the win. Uh Defends his title. First time since Perini's title was was defended since 2003. Uh, Vlasov then finishes second, 19 seconds back, uh, with, a, with a really great one-two punch with uh, Yanis Aguirre finishing third, which is a fantastic result from him. Um, other notables, you know, Tish Benut finishing fifth, you know, quietly finishing fifth. Gam Martin sixth, a minute 14 back. Well, actually, really good ride by Hamilton for fourth. Uh, Tish Benut overall fifth. Gam Martin sixth, a minute 14 back. Jack Haig seventh uh, at a minute 18. Matteo Jorgensen, the American, moved up from 10th to 8th on this day, uh, finishing a minute 29 back. Great result for him. Um, and then uh, Pere Pintre, minute 31. And then Gino Mater rounding out the top 10, a minute 32 back. Um, so Rogla, you know, lost all that time, fell, fallen out of the out of the out of the out of the top ten there. Um, tough to see. Um, nothing you do about it. I mean, just just bad luck. It is no. It speaks nothing of what he has done and what he'll accomplish. I mean, he took three stages here, absolute beast mode, and has proven that he's he's dialed in. He's focused. He's got the form, and he's going to be grinding for the top step of the Tour de France this year. And he's just, he's really on another level. It's just tough to see him go down like this. I mean, you look at these these other top 10, these other top 10 were all within a minute and a half of each other, minute and 32 seconds. He would have taken this whole thing by a minute himself. So he's just really on a new level. Um, so hate to see that. And despite what happened today, you got to call him, you know, let's talk about winners and losers of Perry Nice. Um, starting with the winners, regardless of what happened today, Roglic is a winner. Um, he, in 2019 and 2020, has won early season races. He's won Grand Tours in both years. And look, 2021, it's gonna be it's gonna be the same. He didn't just take two; he took three stages here. Does that mean he he's gonna go on to win the Tour de France? He's gonna be right there. It's gonna be the Rog Pog show, you know, across the <laughs> across the continent today. Uh, Pogaccia was 10 seconds off of stealing the stage. He's absolutely laying a path of destruction on Terreno Adriatico. These two guys are at the absolute top of the sport right now. Um, but this is about Roglic. He's dialed. He's focused. He's going to be sore for a little bit, but he's in top form. And he is absolutely, it's, it's probably a coin toss between those two guys. Now, 
other people doing well. And and just with Roglic, I got to point out, you might see, got my yellow hat on, my my LCL hat. This is from the 2014 Tour de France. Uh, actually got it on the day. Uh, was watching from Lille. Uh, it was the rainy cobble day when uh, Froome actually crashed out of that year's tour. Um, so actually tough day in uh, cycling history for the Froome fans. But uh, the hat continues in, you know, just in honor of today. Felt like it was the first day appropriate to bring out the, uh, the yellow hat. So anyway, continuing on with the winners. Delighted to see, to be able to say something positive about Kofidis, particularly that it's not coming from Gam Martin or Ilya Viviani, who are really the only names people tend to think about. Christophe Laporte, this guy is looking great. He had great legs at the opener at Etoile de Bessage. He won the opening stage. He nearly won a second stage. He's kind of in the mix at Omloop. And then he was everywhere this week. He had six top 11s, because one stage he had a... Uh, he finished 11th. So you had eight stages, and he was effectively in the top 10 on six out of the eight. Just the climbing, the two big climbing stages that he um, uh, that he didn't finish well on. He was second on the punchy um, stage six. He was seventh in the individual time trial, and then he was second again today. So this guy's all over the roads. I mean, top 10 in 68 stages, and then two podiums, and seventh in the ITT great result so Christophe Laporte is really looking good um you know if you can you, you know let's look at a stage like a like a bink bank or something that's got a little bit less climbing he's riding so consistently and he doesn't have the top end speed but he's got this great consistency um he can do some damage he could win a, a, a week-long stage tour if you put him in the right one so that's really good news for Kofidis um moving on Vlasov you know particularly with Lutschenko being out of form Alexander Vlasov is looking really solid. He's definitely the GC guy for Astana this year. I was a little bit concerned. He didn't look great in Provence. You know, I thought he had a shot at the stage to Chalet Renard on Vontu. He raced really well there last year. He won the Deneville Challenge last year up Vontu. He was a bit further back that day. He was in the second group. Um, I mean, it's not bad. Um, you know, he, he ended up, he managed 10th at the GC in Provence. Um, so now being here on the podium uh, and finishing second, it really should have been third, but you know taking second um, and also finishing 16th in the individual time trial is very palatable. You know that the individual time trial was his biggest weakness last year. Um, he just didn't have any good results. Um, you know last year at Torino he was like 30th uh, in the Giro. You know he crashed out last year unfortunately, but at, on the stage one time trial he was 54th. Uh, the Vuelta is 24th, so to see him getting inside the top 20, you know, granted this isn't a Grand Tour ITT, but to see him finish 16th on the individual time trial, uh, particularly on a shorter one, shows that he's definitely been working on that discipline. So, um, you know, it's a top result in a key area for him that's going to, you know, that would have been his Achilles heel. So we just got to hope he continues to get in form. Let's see some of the sparks of brilliance from him. Um on the climbs, and if he if he if he sharpens that up, you know Vlasov is going to turn into the big dangerous GC contender that that we hoped for. Um, also, and like this one's obvious, um, a winner, Max Schachman. I mean, he won here last year in a very different way. Um, last year was kind of a race of attrition; it was shortened, but he was in the leader's jersey from day one. You know, he won uh, in the Placer. He was second in the individual time trial. And then sixth on what ended up being the finale last year on the Colmain. It was a very different look this year. He was 13th on the individual time trial, um, but um, second on stage four and an impressive third on the Colmain, which locked him into second place. And then today, like I hate to say it, but he was kind of, it, it was due to the misfortune of um, Primoz Roglic. Now, look, those things happen, and it'd be a little easier to swallow had this happened to Roglic on an earlier stage and he had to fight back. You know, it's it's tough to see that happen to somebody on a day like today where they don't have the, an opportunity to do anything about it. Um, but nevertheless, Shockman raced great. Like, he did all the things he needed to do to be there to give himself the best shot. Um, all else being equal and no mechanical issues, crashes, etc., Roglic is untouchable right now. Um, so this is just an absolutely... Um, massive result for Shockman, who had a little bit of a tough end to the year last year when um, 
he, he had such a good early part of the season, and then he had that crash into that car that got on the course, like um, like civilian car that got on the course at Lombardia right before the Tour de France, broke his collarbone, rode the Tour de France anyway, uh, was able to get a third place on, on one of the stages, um, did wrap up the season decently well, holding on uh, in ninth at Worlds, but just good to see him out um, having a great start. Also having a big tour, uh, Sam Bennett, uh, you know, taking two wins, took two wins at the UAE Tour. Uh, last year he had seven wins in total, which was pretty light because in 2019 I looked up, he had 13. So last year was actually a bit of an off year for him. Uh, did, a, did a poll, of course, got to do the polls, and asked, is Sam Bennett going to be the winningest sprinter of 2021? 86% said he will be. So he's really solidifying himself as the best sprinter of the group in 2021. And look, can't disagree with the point. Um, he looks great. And him and Morkow just have, have great chemistry, great confidence, and great tactics. So they're doing awesome. So that, that's who I'd say are the winners. Um, definitely, unfortunately, had some big losers in this race as well. Uh, in AOS as a team, you know, they lost Richie Port. They lost Tao Gagenhart. So nobody in the top 10 for the Enios Grenadiers. And, you know, this was a time to see what people like Tao were going to do, um, how they were going to ride with Richie Port, you know, in the new look after coming over from Trek. So it was just tough to see that. And, yeah, it's sad. You had Dylan Van Barla going for it. Uh, he was in 15th, I think, coming into today. You know, couldn't make much of a difference um, off on that. So bummer for Ineos. Um, DSM as well, I'd say. We're, we're a bit of a disappointment. You had Jai Hindley here, Soren Crow Anderson. Um, you know, Hindley salvaged a 10th on Colmain. That was his top result. And Soren Crow was, uh, Crow Anderson was fifth on the ITT, uh, but then could not continue after stage four. He was, he was out of the race. Um, you did have this flash of brilliance by Case Bowl. And look, I don't know what to make of Case Bowl. Uh, he won this, he won stage two. It was the only top 20 day that he's had. You look back at the UAE Tour, he was never better than fifth. Uh, one win last year at the Algarve, a second and third at the Tour de France. Super inconsistent. Big talent, but super inconsistent. Um, seems like he really relies on the on the lead-out train, which simply isn't that strong. Um, so overall, you know, if you were looking to say, hey, you know, what we saw from Soren Krau at the Tour de France last year, taking two stages, is more of what's to come. Um, you know, we would have liked to see it here. I hate to be pessimistic. What what Soren Kraut Anderson did, the way he won his stages of the Tour de France last year, um, was a little bit of luck. It was a little bit of others not wanting to. Um, they were more neutralizing each other than neutralizing Soren Kraut, and he was the beneficiary of of um, other tactics at play. Uh, not that he's not a great rider. He's really strong in the individual time trial, which gives him opportunities to attack in the final kilometers, um, but just we would have liked to see more from DSM between him and Hindley um, in particular. Another loser, uh, Arno DeMar, you know, second on the opening stage. And that was it. You know, he got caught up in a crash. He was slowed in the stage two finale, but uh, Arno DeMar is winless in 12 days of racing. Now I will say last year in his first 12 days of racing, uh, he did only have one win. But he lit it up from there. After his first 12 days of racing, he won six of the next 10 days he raced in. So let's see where he goes from here, but a little bit concerned about DeMar. Uh, similarly, Pascal Ackerman is just having an atrocious start to the season. 18 days of racing in the legs, three third places, and that's it. Horrid start. Um, he exited today as well. He didn't finish the race. Um so, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know what to make of it. You know, last year, looking at his first 18 days, he had four wins in the first 18 days. And, and now this year, he hasn't even done better than a third. So, you know, he's just kind of looked nervous out there in the, fi in the finales, making bad decisions, you know, real bad start for him. Um, so we'll see where he goes from there. And then kind of on more on the GC side, uh, Guillaume Martin, like, okay, overall result here. But he had a really, really bad individual time trial finished 92nd and uh you know that's so bad that i don't know if something happened if he had like a partial mechanical or, or what um you know he was seventh on the Colmain, um 
and and he was third on that punchy stage four. Look, Guillermo Tan, I want to see him top five on on the coal main. You know, he he's got that talent. So let's hope this was just a blip. I did like the way he looked on stage four, um, but I I, th- I think this is a race where he he could have and should have been on the podium. Now, similarly, David Gaudu, uh, 55th in the time trial, 25th on the coal main. It's no bueno. So this would have been a good opportunity to see Gaudu, you know, definitely in the top 10, uh, maybe top 5, you know, as he sort of ascends to this leadership position for Group Parma FTJ. And then two more guys, Nielsen Paulus. Um, uh, he had a good time trial. You know, he... Uh, had a better performance in the time trial here than he did at UAE, for sure, on a relative basis. But um, his 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 attacks did not pay off in any way, shape, or form here, and that's unfortunate. Um, I hope it's not a big setback for him. Like, just go get back out there, Nielsen. But not his best race. And then and then definitely the. Um, kind of the, the go to the climbs was Lutschenko. I mean, he was attacking and then just blowing up. Uh, blew himself up the first time. Second time, it looked like he had cramps. He rode himself into a rock today. I mean, it was just it was just bad um, and real un, real unfortunate to see that for Lutschenko. But with Vlasov riding really well, he's going to lock himself in as the GC guy for them. Um, and then lastly, I, and I mentioned it, great race for Mateo Jorgensen, getting inside the top 10, finishing 8th. Um, real strong, consistent racing from him, and, and a job well done. So, woof, that was Perry Nice. Um, I just can't believe what we saw today. Um, some flashes of brilliance for Bennett, some good fortune, and really strong racing from Shockman, and absolute beast mode with no reward for, um, you know, for Primo's Roglic. But he'll be back, and. Look, the fun doesn't stop because if you haven't been following, you know, you should look over at the Torino Adriatico. The racing is just incredible. I mean, you look at the five stages that have been completed. Um, it's been it's been the absolute electric factory. So um, more to come on that. We'll break that one down. But until next time, thanks for listening. The door breakaway. <laughs>